today we're going to be talking about this thing right here. It is a synth voice called the Cross Volvo Modulator. Uh, it's the latest Cosmo module DIY synthesizer project. I'm going on tour in about a week and I'm sorting out Cosmo the synthesizer right now and this is going to be sat in it being one of the synth voices. This was a synth voice in Ride of the Valkyries and also uh, it was in the Porter Cosmo synthesizer rack. But that was a prototype before the finished one. In fact, this is the prototype. There's a couple of things missing on this one. Well, this is based on a video I did a few months back about building a synth voice all on breadboard. This was basically a compilation of Patreon videos that I put together and I thought actually it's quite good if I just shove this together and put it out as a YouTube video. It just basically starts from the start right to the finish, about an hour or so in length, building a full synthesizer voice on breadboard. Well, this is the combination of that video. However, it has got a little bit more complicated for a synth voice and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But it does have the basic functions of that synth voice on the breadboard, including two oscillators, one primarily for music, one primarily for modulation, but they can bounce between the two. Uh, you've got a mixer, you've got noise, you've got a low pass filter, but instead of one envelope generator like the breadboard one, it's got two envelope generators. And this also has a voltage controlled modulator function, which gives you some interesting modulation capabilities like delayed vibrato, even making it sound like a game FM synthesizer kind of thing. First, let's have a closer look at the functions of the cross model for I can't even remember the name of it I should have made it a sensible name I'm just going to run through a couple of things. So it's got tune one for the first oscillator. There's um, modulation. If you flick it down to this, it just gets modulated by the uh, by the second oscillator, which is the tuner down here. doubles up as a LFO of course. But if you flick it up to the top mode, what that does now is it makes it go through a kind of like a voltage controlled LFO circuit. So this envelope generator, there's two envelope generators. This one, we're gonna make it go. So that's a very pronounced version of it. So we'll make it. You see what? It's got an inverting way of doing that. So you click to invert it, turn the offset up a little bit, and now it will do it the other way around. Doing it inverted and the other way around makes it um, start straight. And as it fades out, it adds a bit of vibrato to it. There's also a VCLFO mod for the filter as well. So I'll just... And then you can start going pretty funky, so. That was actually a 25 minute long video that I put on Patreon, but I've now put it also on the CrossMover Forgulator page on my website. So if you want to see the full functions of that, head over to the website page about this and you can watch that in full with all of the other information. In fact, let's build one right now. So this is everything you're gonna need to make the cross fubber modulator or however you pronounce it. I don't really know what the word even means. Well, there is a picture of this bit of wood on the website as well. So if you wanna see that in detail, as well as a bill of materials, then by all means check out and do so. Uh, you'll notice that there's different capacitors. There are all of the chips over there. These are the transistors that you need, the variable potentiometers and the potentiometers and the power connector and also the circuit board, of course. The first thing you're gonna do is check it out and make 
sure it's all alright and then start cracking on on the resistors because they're the easiest thing. It doesn't matter which way they are around as long as they are in the right labelled resistor package place. So, uh, you know, they're, all of the values are there so uh, it'll be but difficult to go wrong off. and then you snip off the legs and just keep on cracking on bit by bit. It's like washing the, a big pile of pots. You just take it pot by pot. And then you put the diodes in. The black stripe on the diodes need to match up to the black stripes on the diodes footprint on the PCB as well. And when you've done that, it should look something like that. Then we jump onto the ceramic capacitors. These are all decoupling capacitors at 100 nanofarads. And then we do the 10 nanofarads and the 1 nanofarads and all that because they're nice and low. Don't put the electroglytic capacitors in until you've done the IC sockets like I'm doing now, making sure that they match up with the footprints and they're all facing upwards like that. And then we do all of the larger, taller components like the power connectors and the electrolytic capacitors and the transistors. After that, put in all of the bits on the other side, the potentiometers, the LEDs, the switches and the variable potentiometers. But don't solder them in until you put the panel on and bolt a few of them down so it makes sure that they're all nicely in place. And when you think that you've got it nice and central and square, then solder them in just like that. So you've got them all soldered in and after that then you start getting the jack sockets. This can be a little bit fiddly uh, so you put them in and if they fall off just do them bit by bit but it's the same thing. You put them in and then put the panel on uh, at the back PCB to make sure that it all lines up before you solder it in because you, you don't want them all being wonky and snapping things. Putting the ICs in, putting the knobs on top. I decided to sharpie the top of these knobs and it takes quite well. It looks quite nice. I don't know how long they're going to last but if you feel a bit fruity then give that a go yourself. And this is what it looks like at the end of it. It looks quite nice. I think it looks quite fancy. Ooh, lovely jubbly. Anyway, let's see what it sounds like. So here it is, the cross fobber modulator in all of its glory. It's all soldered in on the back. Uh, I did quickly test it. There was no smoke. But if there is smoke, don't panic. Just take it off and just look at it carefully and see what's going on. Actually, I tell a lie. It didn't work the first time because I accidentally put this uh, op amp, this TL074, the wrong way around, which caused the uh, power supply LED to turn off which meant that it was making a short which sadly fried the op amp so I put a new one in but I did it the right way around and then lo and behold it works so we plug it in making sure nothing goes up in smoke and then we pop it up here plug in an output okay it's starting to work As you can see the settings are pretty rowdy, it's not meant to be a, a lush sounding one, it's meant to be a, a funky sounding one, as you can tell. Let's turn on the voltage controlled modulation. As you can tell from the LED here, this is the modulation that is controlled by the envelope generator right here. So we can make it... As you can see... That's only controlling the filter right now. When you're using this to modulate the oscillator, it starts sounding like a bit like a bit like an FM synth. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this BeatStep Pro to try and tune this. It's not super important if you aren't plugging it into things that use volt per octave. You don't need to worry about this step because if you're just plugging it into normal sequences like this and things like that, then it doesn't really matter. But just to show you how to do it in a rough and ready way, let's calibrate the oscillators. So we've got the pitch out of this so we can use it as a keyboard. We plug it into the volt per octave input and then we turn up the bypass of the uh, VCA.
only doing it by ear today, so it's pretty rough and ready, but that is sort of how you do it. You kind of keep on just fiddling with it until it starts making sense. You can use a tuner and just keep fiddling with it that way as well. Let's start bringing in the voltage control modulator. So turn up. Right on the front of it. But the second oscillator is going into the voltage controlled modulator, which is then modulating the first oscillator. But this is also syncing the first oscillator, which makes it sound like a weird FM synth. If you invert the response of the voltage controlled modulation, so you turn it up, it'll end up turning up as the envelope generator goes down. So now you can do things with delayed vibrato and delayed frequency modulation. way of adding a few more functions is using the 1221 oscillator control. This is originally intended for the 1222 oscillators which connect to the back of these so you plug it in and it automatically controls three oscillators and it adds voltage controlled portamento, a voltage controlled LFO depth and stuff, a couple of other functions but this adds an extra set of functions to this voice as well because it's got portamento and LFO and things like that so we'll plug that in there. Trigger in. Then let's plug in another one of the synth voices. Plonk it here. Get the trigger out of that into this one. Let's trigger this one with this sequencer.
of the links that I've mentioned for the crossfiber modulator is below, including the PCB and panel set which you can get, as well as the schematic if you just want to make it on strip board or something. And yeah, I'm the, I'm no computer that's a crossfiber modulator. If you like, we'll see if we can subscribe and do it. We're gonna try it.